This week in the metaverse, a mafia-themed world arrives. Google's AR plans are still very much alive. Vivi's IMX migration takes a big leap forward and more. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Bull Combo, and welcome back to this week's weekly metaverse update. Google is no stranger to the AR space, and while well ahead of its time, Google Glass was the first true glimpse of the future of augmented reality. So it's no surprise Google is back to working on new augmented reality technology. This time in the form of an augmented reality operating system, as well as innovative new augmented reality devices. Not much is known about the operating system or device beyond job openings and recent LinkedIn updates. However, it's clear Google is up to something in the AR field. With the rise of AR now on the horizon, it makes sense for Google to look at a successor to Google Glass, as well as an augmented reality operating system that can function on a variety of devices. It's important to remember that Google's current operating system, Android, functions on a variety of devices, both owned and unowned by Google themselves. We're going to keep an eye on this, and we'll be sure to cover any new developments on the progress of Google's augmented reality technology. We're down to the final three days of the Sandbox Alpha. I'd like to extend a major congrats to anyone that's won an Alpha Pass and that's taking the time to complete all of the Alpha Quests. You'll be awarded with three unique NFTs as well as 1,000 Sand Token for your efforts. A pretty hefty prize just for a few hours worth of work in the Metaverse. Wave 2 of the Snoop Dogg land sale also went down this week, with Steve Aoki joining the party. As is normally the case, the land sold out very quickly. The estate auctions wrapped up this morning with all of them, even the 3x3s, going for at least 20,000 sand token, or around 80,000 US dollars. On top of the alpha wrap-up and the latest land sale, there are also several drops currently live on the marketplace. Some of the items are very affordable, even with sand at close to $4, so if you're looking to snatch some additional NFTs for your land experience, now might be the time to do it. Ember Sword shows new promise with a new investment and consulting round. A new investment deal between the studio and Bitcraft Ventures adds 20 gaming executives and influencers on board to support the MMO development and leveraging of blockchain technology. Some of those on board with the new deal include Rob Pardo, the former chief creative officer at Blizzard Entertainment and the lead designer of World of Warcraft, Dennis Thresh Fong, pro gamer and founder of Xfire, Lithium, and GGWP, as well as YouTuber Dr. Disrespect and Kevin Lin, the co-founder of Twitch. A bit ironic to see those two listed last next to each other. Nevertheless, Ember Sword has seen a steady rise in popularity and support over the last few months. As you may recall, back in August, 35,000 gamers collectively pledged more than $203 million to purchase virtual plots of land in the Ember Sword world. We've covered Ember Sword before. I'm really excited to play Ember Sword and get a chance to take advantage of it when it becomes available to the public. In the meantime, we're going to keep an eye on the progress of the platform and the game itself, and as new developments become available, we'll make sure to cover them here. It's been an active few weeks for the Earth 2 platform and its community. Hot off the heels of their partnership announcement with Polygon Studios last week, yesterday Earth 2 announced the acquisition of the competitive shooter Drone. Along with the underlying technology from the game itself, as well as the core dev team for the project. This sees the dev team officially join the Earth 2 development team. The onboarded technology includes the competitive shooter experience drone itself, the arena editor, drone builder, and all of the additional tools within the game. It makes a lot of sense for Earth 2 to acquire a game like Drone, especially with the established build tools already in place. I could see it being a very easy transition to go from the drone arena editor to an Earth 2 land editor or something to that effect. Now we don't know what this implementation will look like and it likely will take several months before we see any changes. Nevertheless, it's another impressive development that shows Earth 2 is doing everything they can to bring their product vision to life and I'm excited to see what happens next. Adidas has announced their first Metaverse NFT drop. You may recall that Adidas recently announced purchasing of a large land plot in the Sandbox Metaverse, but it looks like their Metaverse plans aren't done yet. They've announced Into the Metaverse, a set of 30,000 digital collectibles. And each of these collectibles come with a set of exclusive benefits, including access to the exclusive fan hub, redeemable tokens for Metaverse wearables, and exclusive IRL merch drops. The initial NFT drop will have an early access mint with several communities gaining first access, including the Board Ape Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, Pixel Vault, G Money, 
and Adidas Pope holders. These sound like they're gonna have some pretty large demand based off of all the utility baked into them. And it's really encouraging to see a large merchandise brand like Adidas getting in on the metaverse space and not only getting in on the metaverse space, but choosing to do so from a decentralized perspective. I think there's always the option right now whether to choose a centralized or decentralized metaverse experience. And I think it says a lot about the companies that choose to take the decentralized route. We'll keep an eye on how this project progresses some of their new drops, and I imagine we'll be covering them again here in the near future. It was a very eventful week for the VV platform. This week's comic drops included Astonishing X-Men number one and Avengers number 57. They followed that up by the announcement of a very Deadpool Christmas drop and the No Time to Die series one Valdo's case drop. But by far the biggest news of the week was the update on the Immutable X migration. The migration took a major step forward this week with all VV collectibles being officially reminted on Immutable X. This sees the collectibles transition from residing on GoChain to residing on the ETH network, a powerful transition that could bode well for the value of the collectibles long term. However, the excitement was short lived as shortly after this exciting news, it appears the VV Discord was compromised and several scam links were posted. This resulted in the Discord channels being temporarily taken offline. It appears things have since been resolved, though it's unknown at this time whether the fraudulent posts negatively affected anyone directly or within the community. Alright guys, and before we get to this last update of the day, if you guys like this content, consider hitting the like button on this video. Also consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that bell to get notified if you enjoy the content I post here on a weekly basis. I want to make sure I get this content in front of the people that care about it. So again, if you enjoy this content, consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell to get notified when I post new videos each week. Sin City is a new R-rated, mafia-themed metaverse world. Comprised of 17 districts, each with its own unique properties and resources that can be used to craft unique in-game items such as guns, supercars, or trendy clothing in the form of NFTs. Sin City will be comprised of 15,000 plots, each measuring 10 meters by 10 meters. Land can be acquired via the initial land sale on December 27th. After purchasing the land, as a landowner you can move to create your faction or join forces with other landowners to establish an affiliated one. A faction is a gang that you or other gamers own. You can only establish a faction in low security districts. And alternatively, you may own land by working your way from the bottom up as a soldier. In this case, you'll start by joining a faction already in existence and providing your protection as an avenue to access high rewards through obtaining in-game resources. This is a very cool metaverse world concept. And it does remind me of Star Atlas to an extent. Some of you might say, well, that doesn't make any sense. This doesn't occur in space or anything like that. The theme's totally different. And while that's true, a lot of the core concepts still apply. The idea of harvesting a resource, transporting that resource, protecting the transportation of that resource. And it sounds like a similar model is in play here with Sin City. I think this is a winning model. It could be very fun for people that are partaking in each individual role within the game. And I'm really curious to see how they shake out the gameplay and how it develops as the game releases. It looks like they're already pretty far ahead, at least in terms of the graphical development of the game. It looks like they have things pretty well fleshed out. So I'm excited to give this a try when it releases. I'm definitely gonna take a look at the December 27th land sale, see what that looks like, see what the prices look like, and see if that's something that's possible to get into. All right, and that was all I had for this week's weekly metaverse update, everyone. If you have any comments or opinions on the things I covered in today's video, make sure to comment down below with those thoughts or opinions. I'd love to hear them. I appreciate all of the awesome support you all show on this channel. I hope you all have a fantastic Friday, an excellent weekend, and as always, we'll see you soon.